And so let me begin uh, on a bit of a lighter note. As a psychiatrist uh, in medical uh, conferences, on public health uh, meetings, uh, Atul and I are used to, if I might say, be the desert. Usually the psychiatrists or the mental health people are the last in the list. So I've uh, got used to say, uh, be uh, saying that I'm happy to be the dessert. Today I'm happy to be the soup or the starter. Uh, <laughs> I'm also going to try and see that I can try and put before you the range of uh, items available for you to choose from and get into uh, nib nibbing, uh, nibbling at each of them. My other area of interest besides culinary sciences has been cricket and if some of you will remember there was this short period, uh, not so short though, uh, when uh, Sunil Gavaskar and Krishnamachari Srikanth used to open the Indian innings and there was such a contrast from the sedate, calculated, totally uh, moderate pace, professionally played Sunil Gavaskar to the Krishnamachari Srikant, you know, devil may care, uh, hit out uh, attitude. So I was wondering what, what my approach should be, and I thought I'll try and do a mix of that, but certainly more of Sunil Gavaskar than Krishnamachari Srikant. Although some of you might believe uh, that I, I might bet like Krishnamachari Srikant, but today I choose not to. So I'm not going to try and get into uh, one basic issue that Sadhana and I referred to, ends. You know, that one particular uh, set of products that seems to be banned. I'm sure there'll be many opinions from very learned uh, colleagues uh, here. But I'm going, to, I'm going to try and, uh, if we can now have these slides, please. I'm going to just try and lay the background for uh, why do we need to discuss this so much. And, and what, are the, what are the background facts uh, in the science and in policy uh, implementation as I see them? As it was said, last 40 years or so, I've been involved in alcohol, drug abuse, treatment, and prevention. And as I said at the last meeting, in the 80s and 90s, there was virtually no talk on tobacco uh, treatment for sure. Tobacco prevention was a focus. Tobacco prevention included two major strategies, as I'll show you. Uh, either legislation or increase awareness and see that people don't ask for it. There was no recognition till the turn of the century for treating people who were addicted. Sir, slide show, please. Yeah, please. Next one. I don't know if anyone of you has seen this in one of my earlier talks, but I can't keep uh, myself from using this. This is the state of the Indian society, I really do think, for good and uh, for not so good reasons. Uh, next one, please. This is the other reality. This young kid of possibly one year or two years, sitting on a charpa in a village situation, smoking away, what tension I have. When you think there has been the no tension for that kid out there. Next, please. With all respects, for those of us who might have drawn uh, salaries from WHO apologies, I haven't. Um, but, but the fact is, the next one, please. We do, all of us around this table, and many others who are online with us, and many other people do care. Do care, especially about tobacco use and tobacco control. And we should take action, and I underscore, based on science and pragmatism. Those are the two operative concepts, it seems to me. Next one, please. Now, I will not elaborate, like I said, too much on tobacco control activities, uh, besides um, the highlights, also not on the strategies for tobacco cessation treatment, but really the rationale or the need for harm reduction approach in tobacco treatment. That's going to be the limited uh, scope that I uh, plan to take. Please, next one. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't think you can see this too well, but uh, like I was saying earlier, in the 80s and 90s, including the FCTC of 2004, the Framework Convention had very little on tobacco treatment, forget harm reduction in treatment, tobacco treatment. And so it was kind of, as I felt in the 80s and 90s, the tobacco treatment was falling between two stools, post turn of the century and last 10 of 12 years, it's increased, it's become better. Next one, please. For those of us, for those of us who might not be very familiar with the idea of, of uh, scientific definition of dependence, these are the criteria that ICD or DSM generally use. Uh, next, please. 
and what was not realized for a long time including in medical uh, circles is that there is physical dependence established at least now for 20 or 25 years this whole idea of it being only a psychological habituation was such a myth next one please a quick recap uh, more for our younger colleagues and of course my learned colleagues for uh, what are the independent uh, what are indicators but uh, next we'll show you something important next slide please I've tried putting down here as to what specialities see the after effects of what route. And I want to highlight that in India, unlike the West, uh, smoking is not the root for tobacco use alone. And half or two thirds of our health issues and public health issues are actually because of the oral route. And we can never overlook that. So while our pulmonology and surgical discipline colleagues and including cardiothoracic surgery, we have one colleague here, uh, while they might see more the effects of smoking, there are dentistry colleagues and uh, gastroenterology and oncology colleagues. We have uh, Pawan, who is uh, a past master uh, from oncology to tobacco cessation, and he'll bear this out. So we need to really realize uh, the public health issue of both the routes, uh, even when it comes to treatment, that limited focus. Next one, please. Now, as I already uh, alluded to, why tobacco cessation? Besides every other reason, one thing if I might remind all of us that I'm sure all of us uh, have known at some point of time. Across, hmm, sorry. across, across uh, behavioral addictions, if there is one thing that is known, it is that people start drug use by modeling, seeing others use, especially for smoking and oral tobacco use. And so if you treat one good, one person effectively, you are actually preventing a whole lot of others to even start. Next one, please. Now, uh, in 2001, we started this uh, at IBAS, and then it's become a huge network of uh, services. I'm going to very briefly present the data for that. Next, please. Uh, these are the steps that we followed. Next. I am sure my friend Pawan and other colleagues will talk about these five A's, but what's important, next, if you show me, is the data from, next slide, please, sir. This is the data that the WHO uh, country network presented in 2012 in the WHO bulletin. And please see, for that concerted effort, the success rate was for abstinence. And this is the slide that's crucial. Three months, 26%. Six months, 21%. Nine months, 18%. That's the reality of all chemical addictions. Next one, please. Sir. I, I want to put across to this group uh, the concept of what I see as biobehavioral disorders. All chemical dependence, all behavioral addictions. I dare say the HIV pandemic was essentially a biobehavioral disorder. Even the recent pandemic was essentially a biobehavioral disorder, if you reflect. Next one, please. And so, what matters, what matters is that we must recognize that the success rates of treatment or prevention, especially abstinence-oriented treatment, is low to moderate at best with best efforts. Leave alone, leave alone what some of us might uh, claim as my clinic has success rate of 90% or 20% or whatever. But please, let's, let's be sure. In my experience in the last 40 years, the science of addictions, and Atul will bear me out, has learned to become pragmatic, not to hit your head against the wall. You know, and keep breaking it. The very old good saying, let, don't let the excellent be the enemy of the good. So science has learned that you not only accept the lower goals, but you even work towards those. Don't aim too high. When you start high jump in athletics, you don't ask the uh, instructor to put the bar at six feet. You put it at three feet. Go to four, go to six feet. Next one, please. Now, Leading examples of where uh, HR approach has succeeded, and I'm sure Atul will uh, elaborate on this, methadone substitution, opium registry. One other example, campaigns against drunken driving. That's, that's an example of HR. Needle exchange programs for HIV and IV drug users. I even go as far as to say the idea of protected sex for HIV prevention is essentially a harm reduction approach, if you pause and think. I won't even get into the details of how our respected father of the nation, for a, for a minute, I think somewhere had lost the bearing to say celibacy for family planning. So extreme solutions don't work. I don't think we need more example. And the unlock activities in 2021. 
the best would have been to lock down for two years. Did we do that? No, we didn't. Next, please. There are also examples of why HR has not succeeded. Let's, let's recognize that. And so, and so, to repeat, treatment is also prevention. As I said earlier, I underscore this as strongly as I can. All NRT methods are essentially arm reduction. The controversy that Sajna referred to seems to be only about one set of products, and I, for the life of me, can't understand why. About vaping, I leave it to uh, people to follow. The important part is this is not going to be relevant for oral tobacco use problem that we have. So how are we in this country going to do harm reduction approach for oral use is the question. And I think that's it. Thank you so much.